to Main Event Pong Presents Books and Booze with Banshee and Deezy. Today we're taking one of David's favorite books. We're taking a suggestion from David and we are reading Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson is very popular. Yeah, he's dope. I'm a big yeah. fan. He's my favorite. We've read Brandon a couple Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson. He's not dead. I'm just doing that. He's yeah. Dope. No, we need to see him. Yeah, yeah. He needs to come out. Yeah, yeah. I'm a fan he always comes to Northern, but he never comes here. So he's very, very popular. He, um, when I don't know, the, the writer of the Wheel of Time series passed oh, away. Yeah, and he took over. He finished it. Right? So and that's like one of the biggest fantasy in all, uh, series of all time. He has fantasy series, um, Mistborn, which Mistborn. we've read. This book um, is a little bit different than his fantasy books. This is a superhero book um, with a twist. With a twist. So uh, you want to go? You want to do some synopsis? Yeah. Um, so pretty much this book is. Oh wait, 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 What are you doing? What this? are we doing? Yeah. We got to talk about what we're gonna do. Yeah. So first and foremost, you know how we do at Books and Booze with Banshee and D's. We've got to start off with the shot. What are we shooting? This is Johnny, uh, Johnny, Johnny Walker, Black Label. Mm -hmm. Oh fuck. Ooh. Still not ready, still not ready. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, that was, ooh, it felt good though. It'll feel good in a second. So today, because we're doing Steel Heart, we decided we was gonna get a little cereal. <laughs> I don't know, okay, so yeah, this is Pineapple Reserve. And do Steel <laughs> Reserve Hard Pineapple. Yeah. Let's taste this. I do like the sound of this though. Yeah. I do, even though I hate this stuff. I, I like love the sound. beer. Like beer just, uh. when you hear that sound, you're like, yes. Oh my god, it's so bad. It's kind of good though at the same it's time. It's not bad. It's kind of bad. It's like equally bad and good. I don't know. It's it kind of bad. Good. But then later I'm like, wait, it's kind of good. Yeah, it's a lie. Yeah. This is a lie. It is. You know how fucked up if you were a kid this shit would make you? Yeah. This is a lie. They shouldn't sell this. All right, give them the synopsis, D's. All right, so David, the main character. So it's a world with a meteor in the sky called um, Calamity. Calamity. Mm -hmm. Calamity has made certain people on Earth have special powers. The special powers come at a price, though. If you start to use your powers, it starts to make you evil. You get real corrupt real quick. You get real corrupt. You get real crazy. You devalue human life. It makes you a horrible person. Like, you're instantly... There's no good guys. That's, like, pretty much what it's about. There's no superheroes. You get these powers. Epics. And they're called epics, and you turn into a supervillain, pretty much. David's yeah. old man was killed by Steelheart. David's completely human, not an epic whatsoever. So he has a fascination with epics, and he's made it his mission to kill Steelheart. And uh, very first line, uh, David is the only person in the the only person that because uh, Steelheart is impervious. He's in, um, he's in invulnerable, invincible. One of his powers is yep. invulnerability, flight, super strength. And he turns stuff to steel. And he can turn stuff to steel. So he's, he's pretty gangster. Mm -hmm. And so nobody, um, he has a scar on his cheek. And David is the only living person who saw how that scar happened. Yes. So he, the first line in the book, I love it, man. It's such a good line. This one, it's, I've seen Steelheart bleed. Mm -hmm. Which I was like, I don't know why, but already I'm <laughs> in! Yeah, but it was such a good, it's such a good line. So Steelheart is the title character, not the main, not the protagonist, but the title character. Mm -hmm. Basically the main villain. Villain. Yes, um, by far. Which you know I like. You know yeah. I love villains. He runs the city. City of Chicago, actually. Runs New Chicago. A, yeah, New Chicago. New Chicago. <laughs> he runs it with a steel fist, if you will. Ah, uh, I see yeah, what you, you did like there. Yeah. Iron fist, steel yeah. fist. I get it. <laughs> um, I like it. He has his cronies. He's got a uh, nightshade and um, firefight and other... Night wielder. And night wielder. I was I'm like, sorry. what? Wait, yeah. who nice? That's, 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 I think that's Marvel. Okay. Night yeah. wielder and firefight. <laughs> Are his main cronies, and there's a bunch of under epics, which they call um, what do they call the lesser lesser, lesser epics, epics? Yeah, yeah. And they pretty much run the city, but it's actually ran like a communist city, yep. and everything. Everybody has a job, and actually, even though it's horrible and people hate it, it's actually one of the better run cities in this poke post-apocalyptic universe. Yep. So the government has issued a law saying that you can't even like have repercussions for epics, right? Yeah. Pretty much, you. They're considered acts yeah. of nature because like they can't immune, control them. Yeah. yeah, or I don't think immune is the right word. Uh, it's immunity. But they basically can do whatever the f they want and yeah. nobody can say shnikes about it. They pretty much laid waste to the entire earth. 
there's not really much. There's not much left. So yeah, yeah. We love we love superheroes here at uh, Main Event Pong. You know, Banshee's more of a, a DC. D's here kind of likes both, but I think he's more of a Marvel. Yeah. You yeah, did of course. He likes Wolverine, right? Yeah, I like my Superman. Favorite. Yes. My favorite. So we love superhero stuff. I think that this, what I like about this book is it is a superhero book essentially, but with a, a twist because it's not everybody that has powers are evil. So the series is called the Reckoner series mm -hmm. and the team of good guys that fight the epics are called the Reckoners. They're a team of yeah. humans who have made it their mission to hunt and kill epics. Mm -hmm. So it still feels like, because there are all kinds of superhero books where it's just like dudes, like Batman is just a dude with money and you know, a chip on his shoulder. So not that I don't love Batman, I love Batman. But you know, that's how it is. Like he's just a guy. So these are just guys with technology or so they think, you know, and they're trying to fight these super, super overpowered villains. It kind of does remind me of like Superman. Yeah, they're all very Superman-like. The reverse. Yeah. Because Superman's nemesis is Lex Luthor, who's just a dude with the, you know, access to technology, mm -hmm. you know, and um, a really big brain and a cause. Like, he honestly, you know, he's a little think, selfish, but I think he... Think Superman's a threat. That's yeah, he okay. honestly believes that Superman's a threat. Batman Granted, he's too. a little selfish. But that's what I kind of like about this, is it's got a little bit of a twist. It does remind me a little bit of some other things, Heroes. Yeah, um, but when I first read it, that's the first mm -hmm. thing I thought of. Rise, Rising Stars. <coughs> if you haven't read Rising Stars, you need to read it. Um, talking about making it into a movie. Have you read it? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you would love it. Okay. It's very It's same I'm thing. Looking. Like kind of a comic comes, and and that's how the superheroes and stuff are born. But it reminds me a lot of that. Um, and there's just something I. There are things I love about Brandon Sanderson's writing style. He's great. Um, dude, dude, it's like constant plot. Don't you feel like his yeah. books are constant plot? Like that dude is not afraid to throw all of his ha shit in the hat in the first book and then come up with equally as much plot in the second book. I, I feel, and yeah, then I think, um, yeah. I've told you that when, about reading Mistborn. You can yeah. kind of feel sometimes when someone writes a first book that they're going to kind of drag it out. Yeah. But no, this guy right here, Sanderson, he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go do one book. And if everybody likes it, okay, well, then I can make more. Yeah. So he puts everything out on yeah. the table with all this stuff, which is why I'm it, a fan. It reminds me, remember when we saw Lee Bardugo and she was like, somebody was like, can you give me an advice for my second book? I actually think that was my friend Sarah. And she was like, don't be afraid to burn plot. He's not. He's like, I'll throw all my cards in this book and then come up with new cards for book two and book three and they'll all be amazing. Not that I've read. I literally finished reading this book like an hour ago. I read um, all of them. Yeah, he has. But I feel like, uh, but you know, I've read Miss Bourne and everything. So I think that that's kind of what I get from him. Now there is one thing that I don't like about Brandon Sanderson. I, I think I know what you're saying. His action is very play by play. Oh, I thought you were going to go another route. No, he's very, um, for a man writer, are you talking about that he's not that romantic? Because for a man writer, I think he is. No, I thought you were going to, because yeah. you touched on it with Miss Bourne, how uh, you, he's like over descriptive. That's what it is, but I find that it only bugs me in action. I feel like it's play by play. I feel like he's more about maneuvers and stuff like that than he is about like emotions and different people, like okay. different people's feelings during action. He'll be like, oh, like in Mistborn, he'll be like, oh, she burned, you know, she burned this, then she burned that, then you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And in this book, I feel like he's like, I turned here on the motorcycle and then I did this and, and this and that. And well, how else would you write action? I don't know. Like I said, I just feel like I. I'm used to female writers, you know, I'll admit it, and they tend to write emotion more, and so they tend to write more of like, this happened and it made me feel like this. If someone's in pain, they'll describe the pain for a second, you know, and they'll pause. I feel like they'll pause for reactions, whereas Brandon Sanderson doesn't. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it's bad. I'm just saying that at times it could be tedious. You, you don't feel like during the action scenes sometimes they're hard to get through? I, you know what? It's, it's hard to write action. Because there's mm -hmm. no visuals, no pictures, so I'm it's actually so a hard fan. Without onomatopoeia. Yeah. Yeah, it's so hard without it. I'm actually a fan of um, his writing style, but this one, mm -hmm. this one more than Steelheart, 
with the action how he wrote it here. Yeah. Because Steelheart actually had a problem with him being a little too detailed. But with this one, I thought he hit a, hit a good formula with it. So I'm actually a fan of how he did do action yeah. in this book. Here. Like I said, I don't hate it. I just, there were parts of it where I was like, okay, I get it. They're fighting. <laughs> I'm all, I get it. <laughs> so little, little side plots and stuff start to unfold. I think the main... The main plot of the book to begin with is David is super, um, he wants vengeance. That's it. His whole life is these epics. He has made all of these notes. He can tell you, you know, I'd say like 80% of the known epics in the world, he can tell you everything about them. He, he's come up with his own classification, which is separate from the Reckoner's classification of, of epics. He knows their weaknesses, uh, or he has theories about their weaknesses. He he can uncover things about them. He knows them so well that he he can guess things about them that are not true, like a firefight, for example. He guesses that firefight's not real, that it's an illusion. But the whole main thing in the plot is he has seen Steelheart bleed. He knows that he's not invulnerable, but he doesn't exactly know how that it happened. And that's kind of the whole goal of the Reckoners, is to take out Steelheart but first they have to figure out how, what's his weakness. It's, it's funny because you don't really, like, you literally do not find out Steelheart's weakness to the end of the book. Like, to like five pages because the end, I just found it out like yeah, an hour ago. There's so much, like, it's all theories and everything works and then they mm -hmm. try it and they fail. And then Steelheart gets more, mm -hmm. more cautious about it. But it's... Mm -hmm. It's worth it because you're like, man, what is this like? What's gonna happen? Like, what's his weakness like? And we're not gonna tell you his weakness because you have to read it. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Okay, we won't spoil it for yeah, you. Yeah, because it's actually very. We, do, we normally do just fucking spoil all the shit, but we won't. We won't because it's actually very. It's very clever because we didn't really get much into the dynamic of the epics. The epics all have these powers and they're all extreme powers, mm -hmm. but uh, there's a very specific weakness to every power. And later in the series, they touch on on where they come from. Right now, you don't really know why they have specific weaknesses. Everything in this book is like that to where all the weaknesses are very specific to the character. And David is so clever, he's he's figured out how to, like, like almost like a game of chess, how to put these people in these traps to where they can take them out. Yeah. And the weaknesses aren't like kryptonite. It'll be like, like fortuity. Like, yeah. since you know he can't, he can't get in any trouble. You have to put him in a position to where he has no other choice but to get into trouble. Things like that. Yeah. Conflux, what What was this? Conflux was one of the, the ones that killed in the beginning, right? No, it wasn't Conflux that... I thought Conflux was the Edmund guy. Oh, isn't the, the isn't that the guy the who's like energy? his right-hand man? Or he, he basically said that he was like a... That's kind of, I think, Conflux is there for... Isn't that the guy who's like... Basically, still heart slave, but they think he's his right hand yeah, man. He's yeah, he's actually not evil, actually. Yeah, and that's kind of the first, I think, little hint because there are these fanatics who believe that good epics will come. Mm -hmm. So David's father was one, and is it Cody that's one or Abraham? It is it's Abraham. Co it's Abraham. Abraham. So he's one of the reckoners. Believe that like there are going to be epics that are good not all epics will be bad and it's kind of like a fanatical like, religion, a, religion. like a cult yeah. or a yeah. religion about it and you're the everything that they let lead us to believe is to believe is no like epics are bad like we're they're just trying to enslave us and you know make us their subjects i think that um he just still hard doesn't call people citizens he calls them subjects you know and i think that Conflux is the first little hint that, hey, this dude's just a normal dude who accidentally killed his wife, you know, making a frozen burrito. That's true. I didn't make that. I'm not joking. That happened in the book. And he's just a normal guy. You learn that his, he's just trying to adjust his situation. He knows he's a puppet. He's basically a slave, you know, and when they meet him, he just seems like a normal guy. Like, they're just talking they to him. They thought he was some crazy guy. Yeah. And they see him and he's... Just a regular guy. So, yeah. yeah. You know what's so hard about this book? Because I'm it's trying so to save some stuff. It's so many different. What a twist. Yeah. I know, because like with Megan, I don't want to ruin Yeah, some I'm shit. trying. This is a bad yeah. book. To, it's a great book, but it's hard to review yeah. because I don't want to kill it. Because this whole book is like, unlike any yeah. other book, you don't really know until it happens. Yeah. Brandon does a good job at hiding things. Yeah. And then like you discover it as the, 
even, as the main character discovers it, and you're like just yeah. as surprised as they are. I feel like we've ruined other books before. I feel like we've ruined a little bit of Shadow and Bone, but I don't feel like it mattered. I feel Not like because those weren't really the points of the books, like the twist or whatever. Um, but in this one, that the kind of is the point. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we don't want to ruin it for you. Um, so who who's your favorite epic? Oh. What's your favorite power? Yeah. Oh, okay. So super, oh, super nerd question. I wasn't expecting this. Hmm. <laughs> I almost say I almost said one. You almost said but, one. <laughs> but I don't know if I can. I guess I could say this name because you won't know this name until about the end of the book anyway. But Limelight, of course. Limelight's powers are dope. Limelight is the <laughs> shit. Limelight is so oh dope. Oh my it's god. Disgusting. Even though um, Firefight's powers are dope too. Firefights are awesome yeah. too. I like how you put that. Firefight. Yeah, I have to. I have to. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with Night Wielder just because I think that shit is so goth. It is. And you know, Banshee may not look goth, but in in my heart, I'm still a 19 year old little goth girl who's like rocking out to like, you know, Sisters of Mercy and Nine Inch Nails at you know Club Perversion in LA. If you never went there, sorry, it's closed now. But um, I I just I think he's so goth. Um, he can turn out basically. He can just shut off lights, and he's an illusion. An illusionist Past or the whatever walls. they call him. But he basically keeps all of New Cago, which is Chicago, but now it's called New Cago in Steelheart's world. Utter darkness. Um, in utter darkness, yeah. So I'm just like so when he when he bites it at the end, like then there's light and you're like, What's mm -hmm. happening? It's crazy. Yeah, so these people haven't seen light for forever. So Megan, I do I do like her. You guys know. Um, well, I was about to ask you, what's your favorite character? Megan's my favorite character. Okay, of and granted, my name is Megan. That's not why. But it, I think this is the first female character I've picked as my favorite character mm. in this show, isn't it? I see. A, it's not just because she's you know my namesake or whatever, but I feel like I see a lot of myself in her. She's very. Um, Snarky a little bit. Sarcastic. Yeah, sarcastic. She's, you know, she's funny. Um, she's the total package. Yeah, she is. She's, and she's spicy. Like, yeah, she's, she's... When David talks about her, which I... Cause you, and we've had this conversation before about, um, like, what's going on in a guy's mind. Especially yeah. when it comes to romance. And he pretty much, I think he nailed it. Well, he's a guy, so yeah. he would know. Because he, when he describes yeah. her, he's talking about how awesome she is in his head. Mm -hmm. But then, like, how beautiful she, she is. He's always checking her out when she's not looking. Like, it's it's very much yeah. from a guy's perspective. A and I thought it was done very well because it wasn't cheesy. It just seemed real. It seemed authentic. Okay, well, I'll speak about my favorite character real quick. Yeah, who's so your favorite it's character? Very, it's difficult because between it's David and Professor. I David love is a dope character. David is actually, Professor and that's just because it's my name. David is a dope character, and I don't really go for the leads either. And he is actually pretty cool. I, I like how he is with Megan. I like uh, how he's just a human trying to take on one of the most powerful epics in the world. Yeah. And he's going to get his revenge. I like how he's like against all odds. Like he is clearly the underdog. And I like how he's not, and he goes up, he goes about saying this. It's kind of like me, me when I say that I'm not. It's it's like me when people are like, you read so fast, and I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not a fast reader. I'm a dedicated reader. Mm -hmm. That's David. People are like, you're a nerd. You're so smart. He's like, no, I'm not smart. He's like, I just don't do anything else but dedicate yeah. my my life obsessively to you know categorizing and figuring out the epics like literally that's all he does he's like i'm not a particularly intelligent guy i'm not you know i don't have anything that makes me like in tune or like you know uh i was right what's the word Obsessed. i'm looking for yeah like any like i don't oh, know that makes him um like I don't know, like a, a driven. Yeah, he's not. He's just like I'm. Just this is my purpose. This is this is it. This is literally that's his whole life. He didn't care about having a life. All he cared about is revenge. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and I like that. They, it's hard to pick between him and Prof because Prof's story is so secretive too, and he ends up being a dope character. Like maybe for the series, Prof is my favorite character. But for this book, I'm gonna go ahead and say David mm -hmm. because it's names. yeah it's. Because it's built, to, it's built around David him. And I'm yeah. Megan. It's built around him. So I'm gonna say David. But when we review the second and third one, you'll see why I pick. I go with Prof. So book two is called Firefight, huh? Yes, it is. I'm real excited to read and that. Guess, guess, what book three, guess what book three is called? 
Limelight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I love when there's a super simple line in a book. Yeah, it's so romantic. I don't like when people are overly, like, poetic or whatever. Yeah, because guys aren't really Saying like something them. like, you know, what's that line in fucking Three Musketeers where he's like, in morning hue of sunlit flower, something about your passion fit. You know what I'm talking about? Gay, gay, gay. That shit, I'm like, gay, 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 gay. <laughs> exactly. As a girl, I'm like, gay, gay, gay. But this stuff like this... This stuff right here, I'm like, oh my god. So, um, David says to Megan, accidentally, he doesn't mean to say this, it's not my intention to let go of you. I mumbled, not ever. And I'm like, it's so romantic. I love it. Oh my god. He's romantic in his underdog way. Like, he's very... Yeah. I don't know how to say it, but he's, um... I don't know. He's just so cute and adorable. I just fucking... He wore Megan She down. doesn't find him that way, though. Yeah, not yeah, the beginning. She, she doesn't. He definitely wears her down. Like Since it. I suggested this book, I'm going to pop this question. Mmm. Uh, give it a rating. Book rating? Book rating. I'm asking you this time. 4.75. 4.75? That's what? almost five. You've given the worst books five. I've given two books fives on this show. Which ones were the other ones? Thief of Always, my all-time favorite okay, book, and yeah. Shadow and Bone. Well, we gave it a 10, because we were rating 10 at that point. Okay. This is the third highest rating I have given any book. Okay, I'm just, just asking. And I already told you that <laughs> the 2.5 is the action thing. Alright, that's fine. Four po- oh my god! 4.75! It's this- fine, because I'm going to make up with it with this. Are you guys ready? Six. <laughs> out, of scale, out of scale of 5, 1 through 5, I give it a 5.25. <laughs> I'll make up for her 0.25. Oh my god! Uh, that's like the third highest rating I've given. I think I love how I haven't given anything less than a four. And four is like a five. I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Wait, I think I gave something a 3.5. No, I didn't. What did you I don't know. Then? A four. See, that's what I'm trying to say. This is a 4.75. It's <laughs> higher. Okay. I'm just being honored. I just rate stuff for whatever it is, like whatever. <laughs> your motherfucker. <laughs> it's your What'd you opinion. give Harry Potter? I don't remember. Exactly. Shut we're, up. We were drunk. I don't remember. We're always drunk. Yeah. You weren't even that now. drunk. I'm drunk now. I'm like Dizzy right here. was yeah. in trouble. Before we finish it, cast Steelheart. From oh. Me. Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. We gotta cast it. Yeah. I feel like this one for this. some reason we gotta cast it. That's oh. Slow. Uh, dude from, um, True Blood married to Sofia Vergara. Oh, yes! Alcide. Um, Alcide, I can't Joe Manginanelli or whatever his name is. Dude's yeah. fine as fuck. Well, I, I can't go with that, but he's built like a house. And he would be perfect for Steelheart. Like, the way he describes him, it's on point. I'm going with you on that. Yeah, so you know what? Go. I like it. Mm. Yeah. Cast Megan. You know what? I'm not going to do Scarlett Johansson because for some reason... No! Was, I'm not. Because been done! <laughs> in, my, in my head, that's who kept popping up because that's how he described her. But I don't like her like that. So, I would go with... Hmm. What do you think about Teresa Palmer? Who's that? Um, have you seen uh, Have you seen Warm Bodies? She's the girl with the, with the zombie whatever. I've never, I haven't seen I know what movie you're talking have about. Have you seen... seen that what's the name of that fucking Nicholas Parks book? What else is she in? Uh, I'm gonna pull her up. Oh, what about um? Th- she won't do it. But what about Homegirl from um? Uh, uh, Game of Thrones. Emily. Emily. Yeah. Um, she's. A, I think if her in real life she's a brunette. But why not? This would be a big movie if they made this. Yeah. Don't you feel like I it would think, be I big? I think she would do very very well. Um, David. Let's make David black, dude. I would love to make David Black. Let's make Black. David Black! I would love to make David Black. Uh, because, well, you know what? What's his name? They, Michael B. Jordan. They specifically make Abraham Black, but actually, if I was if I was doing it... Oh, no, it's Cody that has... Cody's which one is, Which one is it that, like, is always trying to get some different ethnicity? It's Cody, right? Cody. They make Abraham Black, but you know who should be black? It's Professor Prof. Oh! Black. Idris Elba yeah. as a professor. Prof, yeah, yeah. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love it! Prof should be black. He would be... And Idris would be amazing. He's so good. He would be, he would be oh! amazing. So we're, we're not going to make... the best cast ever. Yeah, this, we're doing good. We're knocking it out of the park. We're not going to make David black. Okay. So we got to go with... um. Who is David? I'm trying to think. Maybe David. I'm trying to think. I need a... Well, oh, what about... um? Nah, he's too... um. He's too small. 
dude from your show, Team Wolf. <gasps> Dylan O'Brien. Yeah, he could be David. Dude, David o Dylan O'Brien would be a hot. I'm, I'm down. Dylan O'Brien, you could be David. Did I just come up with the cast? And yes, we cast? did. Oh my God, yeah. look at that. Best cast. We did. Hey, I came up with it yourself. You, you did. Yes. And he would be the professor. The, the best oh my God. Prof. Even though Abraham is clearly like a black dude, mm -hmm. Idris would kill. I, w I am totally okay with you making Abraham some other race. If you guys make this movie, if you make this movie, do it. I'm okay. You make it. I, I, You're I, in I'm film school. Shot. Yeah. If I don't I, know if you know this about D's, but he's in film school. I'm trying. I'm almost done. America, I'm almost done. If I can make this movie, he'll be the first one I call to play Prof, and he would kill yes, Prof. Yes, he would. He would kill Prof. So, I mean, we'll see. And then um, we can make Abraham. I'm cool with making Abraham anything else, because you got to make it diverse. I mean, you put two black people in the movie, and no one can watch it. But, um, yeah, you got to be uh, Prof should be black. David could be uh, Maze Runner, Team Wolf, dude. Mm -hmm. That'd be bomb. Yeah. You know, I told you guys last time that I love horror. You know I love fantasies. You know I love Harry Potter. But I also love science fiction. I love Star Trek. And I feel like this is not a science fiction novel. Eh. Well, they have eh. power, so it's science fiction. Eh. <laughs> it, to me, it feels... It feels science fiction, but more than anything, to me, it feels dystopian. Mm -hmm. Post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. But... It's the best of everything. Please go read this book. Yeah, just read it. Well, because yeah, we're yeah. we're rambling about it, but All it, kinds it's, of a, shit. it's a yeah. dope book. That's what happens when you read a good book. You start yeah. bringing in other stuff because this book can relate to so many other genres. It's yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. Five point two five, as I said. Four point seven five, third highest it's rating stingy. I've given on this show. Stingy. Third highest rating I've given on this show. Literally, one of the other books was my like all-time favorite book. Thank you for joining us with books and, uh, on Books and Booze with Banshee and Dees. Um, later in the month, we're going to do a book that's being made into a motion picture. Um, we'll probably get Der Wolfie back as a guest star for that one. So if you're a Der Wolfie fan, hashtag Der Wolfie transcends is his hashtag. Um, stop on by. There's a hashtag. Anyways, thanks for joining us. Bye, guys. Peace. Have we done with this? Have we done? You got a problem with transcending? No, I probably got your own hashtag.